Spain currently has 55 different roller coasters. Their biggest and best coasters mainly come from three parks, Port Aventura, Parque de Atracciones de Madrid, and Parque Warner Madrid. And the country's lineup got a lot more interesting in 2023 with the opening of Uncharted at Port Aventura and Batman Gotham City Escape at Parque Warner. So in this video, I will rank the country's top 15 roller coasters. Before starting the list, I want to note this countdown will only include coasters I have personally ridden. This means there will be a few notable exclusions. First, there will be no mountain coasters. These are usually solid rides that can offer some laterals and small pops of airtime, if there isn't too much auto braking. Second, I have not been to Parque de Atracciones Monte Ingueldo, meaning you will not see the historic Montaña Suiza on this list. This is the oldest operating steel coaster in the world, and it looks to have a breathtaking setting overlooking the water. Third, I have not been to Terra Mitica. However, I am going to include an honorable mention to one of their coasters based on a clone I have ridden elsewhere. With all that out of the way, at number 15 is Stampeda at Port Aventura. This is a dueling wood coaster from CCI. The two tracks are close by for much of the experience, so the racing aspect is well executed. I also like the convoluted course and the laterals on the turns. Then there are a few airtime spots in the first half as well. However, this ride does have two issues. One, the pacing. A trim on the first drop saps the ride of much of its speed, so you are crawling through the second half. Two, this ride is bumpy, particularly further back in the train. Number 14, TNT Tren de la Mina Parque de Atracciones de Madrid. This is a Gerslauer family coaster. The ride starts off slow, especially because the chain lift slows to a crawl at the end, but the second half is really good. The turns and pullouts have solid force to them. Then there's even a small pop of airtime, and the layout weaves its way through some caves and structures to enhance the speed and also hide the upcoming elements. Up next would likely be Inferno at Terra Mitica. While I've never been to this park, I have ridden an exact clone of this ride in Kirnu at Linen Maki. This is one of the smaller Intamin Zack spins. This ride is short, but it is intense. The vehicles can rock and flip. Unlike the SNS free spins, the center of rotation is not around the rider. It instead is placed around the car. This makes the flips wilder, but a bit more uncomfortable. The initial raven turn viciously rips you downwards, inducing a freefall sensation. Then the final raven turn offers a pop of airtime and a nearly guaranteed flip simultaneously. It is a great moment. Number 13, Stunfall Parque Warner Madrid. This Facoma giant inverted boomerang is a powerhouse. The ride is nearly hyper heights, and the two vertical drops are fantastic. Both have floater airtime, and the forward facing one has a stomach drop sensation as well like a drop tower. Then the three inversions are ultra forceful and disorienting, especially because you get to take them going both directions. My one issue with this ride is that the ride has bulky over the shoulder harnesses and you can hit your head on the cobra roll. I find this particularly uncomfortable given this ride's intensity. Number 12, Tarantula Parque de Atracciones de Madrid. This is a unique Mauer spinning coaster. This one is built on a hill and it features a series of tall drops. These have nice zip to them, especially if you take them sideways or backwards. You can also get a little airtime along the way as well. The layout does mellow out towards the end, but this one's enough twists to keep you spinning start to finish, so that helps balance it out. Number 11, Uncharted at Port Aventura. This is a well-themed experience. The rocky facade fits in well with the far west. Then the theming in the queue line is fantastic. There are props, a Nathan Drake animatronic, and a walkthrough section that feels more like a haunt. The coaster itself has some screens, but a lot of it takes place in the dark. But the ride system is neat. It's an intimate multi-dimension coaster, so the vehicles can spin throughout. The ride is not too forceful for the most part, but the series of launches do have some punch to them. Number 10. Montaña Rusa Tibidabo. This ride may have the best setting of any coaster. For one, it is built in a wooded hillside. That would be cool on its own, but this hill also overlooks Barcelona. 
so you see all the buildings with the water in the distance. It's a view fit for a postcard. Then this Vacoma creation also is a genuinely fun layout. There are some great moments of positive G's, particularly on the initial pullout and the 540 degree helix. Then there are some lateral jolts in the transitions as well. Just don't expect any airtime here. That is not what this ride is about. Number 9. Furious Baco at Port Aventura. This is a very unique launch coaster from Intamin. This is a wing coaster with a hydraulic launch, and that launch is a powerful one between the heavy trains and uphill slope. Then the layout stays low to the ground, allowing the coaster to maintain its blistering speed start to finish. The dip after the launch has nice airtime as well. Then there's an inline twist towards the end with incredible hang time. I just wish this ride were smoother. The directional changes can chop your neck further back in the train. Then the edge seats are very bumpy. But a front row ride on an inside sea is fantastic. Number 8. Abismo Parque de Atracciones de Madrid. This is the world's only Mauer extended sky loop. The inverted lift hill is wild. You get some freaky hang time. You remain out of your seat on the barrel roll. Then the dive loop and valleys offer great positive G's. The train does shovel here, which can cause a headache. Then there's some airtime too in the large camelback and that speed dip into the station. I like most of this ride, but the finale is not the most comfortable. You break in a vertical incline, and the restraints can deliver a bad gut punch because they hug your tummy. Number 7. Tornado at Parque de Atracciones de Madrid. This is a rare full circuit invert from Intamin. This coaster features three inversions, all of which are great. The two vertical loops have great positive G's and snap. Then the corkscrew is even snappier. The turns also have nice G's as well. The pacing is a bit wonky in each element though, because the forces ebb and flow through each of those elements. But the spikes and forces are intense. Just make sure to lean forward on the directional changes, or else you could hit your head a few times. Number 6. Shadows of Arkham at Parque Warner Madrid. This is a Bollinger Mablard Batman the Ride clone. These rides are always forceful, but this one's a bit more oomph than others. The inversions are snappy and dizzying. Then the turns will get blood rushing to your feet. And this one also is a really cool queue line themed to Arkham Asylum. There's quite a bit to see here if you're a big comic book fan. Number 5. Dragon Con at Port Aventura. This is a rare B&M sit-down looper. It has similarities to both Kumba and Kraken. The ride starts off with a straight drop with a smidge of airtime. Then it navigates eight inversions. They're all taken in a similar order to other B&Ms, but these ones have more oomph than usual. The inversions are fairly forceful. They also manage to be smooth despite their snappiness. But the star has to be the zero-G roll. The train violently rotates through it, causing intense laterals. Number 4. Red Force of Ferrari Land. This Intamin creation is the tallest and fastest coaster in all of Europe. An LSM launch accelerates riders to 112 miles per hour or 180 kilometers per hour. The initial kick is okay, but the subsequent buildup of speed is impressive and what really stands out. And if you're in the front row, you're going fast enough that the wind will force your cheeks back. Then you have a 367 foot or 112 meter tall top hat. You get a scenic view plus some great airtime. You get good floater airtime at the apex, and also on the descent. And as a bonus, there's a pop of airtime as you jump up to the final brakes. This ride may be short, but it's mighty powerful. Number 3. Superman La Atraccion de Acero at Parque Warner Madrid. This B&M floorless coaster moved way up my rankings in 2023. My rides in 2019 were fairly forceless, but my recent ones were anything but. This is now my favorite floorless coaster. This ride features seven inversions. Most are heavy on the positive G's, but the zero G roll is super floaty, which is a nice contrast. Then the helixes also dish out good positive G's as well. But the main thing that makes us stand out relative to other floorless coasters is the inclusion of negative G's. There are multiple hills and drops offering sustained floater airtime. These moments feel like something that should be on a B&M Hyper. It gives the coaster nice variety. 
The ride does have a very noticeable rattle, but it doesn't translate to any headbanging or discomfort, it's just present. Number 2. Shambhala Port Aventura. This is the world's best B&M hyper. For one, it is closer to a giga than the minimum threshold for a hyper, so this ride has some gargantuan drops. They offer copious amounts of floater airtime. Then because of their size and the long train, a few of them also give me a stomach drop sensation I typically don't get on coasters anymore. Those up front will also get plenty of airtime over the top of each hill. And at the same time, you have the stunning views of the nearby mountains and water. Then this ride also throws in some positive G's in the pullouts and turnarounds. And it is also one of the smoothest coasters in the world, making it an absolute joy to re-ride. And coming in at number one is Batman Gotham City Escape at Parque Warner Madrid. This Intamin multi-launch coaster is exceptional. For one, it has great theming. There's a well-done pre-show, and then some visual elements at the start and end of the coaster. Then the layout is action-packed throughout. The coaster's three launches, all of which have some punch to them. Then this ride has some elite inversions. The stall may be my favorite inversion in the world, as you get several seconds of hang time high in the air, and it beautifully transitions into air time on the exit. You also get great hang time in the initial corkscrew, and then the dive loop has a good pop of inverted air time before pulling you downwards. Now speaking of air time, this ride will launch you out of your seat several times. The iconic top hat and subsequent bunny hill have particularly strong ejector air time. Then this coaster also throws in some laterals for good measure. I could not get enough of this ride during my visit, and it's the country's best new coaster. So those are the top 15 roller coasters in all of Spain. What are your favorites in this country, or thoughts on any of the rides I mentioned? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this countdown, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.